So I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about where our biological molecules we've been talking about come from. Um, and of course, we're going to be talking a little bit about the origin of the Earth itself. This may or may be not be what the ac actual Earth looked like. It's an artist's um, drawing of it, which, but I think it's kind of interesting to think about. Now, the Earth formed, um, scientists believe, about 4.6 billion years ago, give or take, and it formed from the debris that was orbiting the sun at the time. The sun um, started out as a cloud of dust. Um, most of the matter that was in our solar system condensed to form the sun and began to undergo fusion, um, and we call it burning, but it's not really burning, but it, giving off energy. The parts of the cloud that were remaining clumped into smaller chunks that we now call planets, and then, of course, even smaller chunks that are now today's um, asteroids. So the Earth formed after, slightly after the sun, um, and this is how we, we believe it's about 4.6 billion years old. Now, um, based on geological studies and what we can see in the rock um, record, the record of rocks of the Earth, we can get an idea of what the early Earth might have been like. And over the years, we've learned more and more and more about what it must have been like on the Earth in the first few billion years. Now, we know that as early as 4.3 billion years ago, we started to see water forming on the Earth. Most scientists, I think, believe that the water that began to pool on the Earth came from the Earth itself. As volcanoes erupted, volcanoes give off a lot of water vapor, and eventually that water came out into the atmosphere and condensed and rained down and formed um, what we know as the oceans and lakes of today. Well, not of today, but of that time. We also know that the earliest atmosphere on Earth had little or no oxygen in it because we know that the oxygen from the Earth came from green plants. So when the Earth first formed in the earliest atmosphere, we did not have plants on the planet, so we did not have oxygen. So the question then is, where did these complex organic molecules come from? the proteins, the carbohydrates, the lipids. There are three theories that are not mutually exclusive. So they could all have happened, or two of the three could have happened, or only one of the three could have happened. We don't know. Miller and Urey, in the 1950s, a couple of scientists, conducted some experiments in the laboratory based on what we knew about the early Earth at the time of the 1950s. Our ideas have changed a little bit since then. But Miller and Urey actually conducted an experiment in a laboratory using what we know of the early atmosphere. Uh, they used this contraption here. They placed some atmospheric gases in uh, this chamber here. And then they added some sparks to simulate lightning, which was around at the time of the early Earth. And what they found is down here in, the, in what they're calling the model of the primitive ocean, Within a week, they saw formation of amino acids, which are, of course, the building blocks of proteins. Um, it was a little controversial at the time, but quite an important experiment that they conducted. In later studies, they, uh, scientists have repeated their experiment, but using a better approximation of what we know the atmosphere to have been like at the time. And in repeating it, you still see formation of amino acids within about a week. So in Miller's experiments, there was hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and ammonia and methane. And I think most scientists today don't believe there was any ammonia or methane at the time. But even with these gases, water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and hydrogen, you still see formation of amino acids after about a, a week. Um, we also have seen meteorites that have fallen to Earth from meteors in space sometimes have organic compounds in them. This is some indication that possibly we might have gotten some organic compounds from there coming to Earth from space. Um, there were very many meteorites coming to Earth in the early formation of the Earth because, of course, there was a lot of debris still around and very little atmosphere on the Earth to prevent them from hitting the ground. Most of the atmosphere today burns up a lot of the meteorites. So we think that some simple organic compounds may have come from meteorites. That's one idea. And then the third idea um, is this idea of the hydrothermal vents. 
Hydrothermal vents are areas where hot uh, water is coming up at the bottom of the sea. Um, these are areas where the, the crust of the earth is thin and the, the um, molten magma underneath is near the surface and water is heated under there. Um, in these areas, there's a lot of the kinds of things that come out of volcanoes, but of course in the water, sulfur compounds and um, other kinds of compounds that you see coming out of volcanoes. And it's in that, those areas that you actually do see amino acids forming um, around these hydro, hydrothermal vents. In fact, this, this man, Robert Ballard, was one of the first to discover some unusual life forms existing around the hydrothermal vents. We have some shown here and these little shrimp. Um, and their food web actually does not need sunlight to happen, which it was a, a big deal when he, he discovered that. But conducting experiments in the laboratory using some of the substances that, like I said, that we see around the hydrothermal vents, these are some of them, water, carbon monoxide, potassium cyanide, and then some metals, along with sulfur, the sulfur compounds. It yields amino acids in about a week, like we saw with Miller and Urey's experiment. So those are the three ideas. One is there's just some lightning and some atmosphere, and you get some compounds. Secondly, the meteorites, and then third, the hydrothermal vents. So we can get amino acids that way, but then how do we get complex, complex organic molecules such as proteins, a polymer? Um, there's a couple of ideas for that as well. Again, these are all theories. These are ideas that people have with some evidence, but we don't know for sure. Um, we do know that clay soils have negative ions. So the soils that are heavy in clay, we don't have them in Florida, but elsewhere you'll see heavy clay soils. Um, they have negative ions in them, and as water evaporates, these ions could be responsible for sticking the monomers together because of the charges. Um, also, we have iron sulfides found in the water around hy hydrothermal event, uh, vents, and they donate the needed electrons to stick the monomers together as well. So it could be um, at the hydrothermal vents we get formation of polymers due to these iron sulfides that are in the water, or it could be if um, we're getting organic molecules around the edges of the ocean where water is evaporating, you might, it might be due to these clay, clay soils contributing this sticking power. Um, what we do know is that modern organisms actually use iron and sulfur clusters as cofactors, in, um, and so it might be a remnant of these iron sulfide compounds around the hydrothermal vents that might be another piece of evidence for that. So again, these are all um, sort of theories, but interesting ideas, and I wanted you to be aware of them.